Hello, NATR 346 class. This is a hopefully five to seven minute, a short video to introduce you to a very nifty tool to uh, measure, estimate the area of watersheds and to find out uh, rainfall rates within those watersheds and a whole bunch of other information that's packed in that we won't be working with for this class. But uh, so I would, what I want you to do is, is watch this. Uh, there will also be an assignment uh, with instructions how to do this. And I'm going to want you to use this tool to measure the watershed of that Laurel Canyon and see how uh, close your measured estimate is to what this program says. So, and from now on, when we do a watershed analysis, uh, we'll be using this tool. So I think it's a pretty easy tool to use. So let's get started. You go to stream stats. If you even just Googled stream stats, you would come to this place, but I'll obviously give you the URL and the assignment. You start with access the application. And then just like so many of these GIS tools, you search for a place. I have the uh, ARC campus as a place here. I just typed in the address for the American River College campus. We're going to be looking at a watershed behind the campus there with this tool. So we just click on that, and here we are. And you'll see uh, the campus here, and notice in the back 40 there, there's a little creek here called, it's called Kohler Creek, and then I think this is Arcade Creek. It's a bigger uh, creek. So uh, it's a little unintuitive here. Then it says click to select our region. So you click California. And then this will pop up. So that's a little bit funny. Even after they found the area, you still have to click on the study area. So we're right now, you just follow along. Identify the study area. We've done that. And then you delineate. And so it's interesting here how they do this. So this is the base map. It's not a very pretty base map. But behind this is all, they've digitized all the elevations in the United States. And so when you zoom in to layer, right now we're at zoom level 14. If you zoom in a little bit more, you'll notice that the rivers are represented by these chunky squares. This gives you the idea that, yeah, this is part of their model. So what we want to do in this assignment, you see Kohler Creek here. We want to know what is the watershed for Kohler Creek. Again, what we did before was we could overlay the topo map and you could painstakingly kind of click around and try to find it. Uh, I think that's a difficult thing to do. Maybe you'll agree. You can use this program to say, okay, I want to, this watershed that starts here, right where Kohler Creek hits Arcade Creek, I'd like to know the area that is drained by that creek. I want to know, maybe the creek is looking a little polluted. I'd like to know where pollution might be feeding into Kohler Creek. I don't want to look over here, obviously, um, I think right here would contribute to Kohler Creek. What is the boundary of the area that feeds this creek? So you got to zoom in to level 16 until you see the funky things. Then you go delineate. I want to delineate the watershed. And it tells you, click on a blue stream cell to start delineation. Let's start right here. Click on that. And there's your clicked point, And it says your clicked point is valid. Well, that's nice of them. And it's delineating your basin now. It takes a little while to do this calculation. It is uh, working away. So then when it delineates, it'll pop out like this, which is kind of cool in and of itself. So this Kohler Creek, I don't know if you've been back in the back 40 of the campus and walked the creek, but this tells you that this is the area that contributes to that creek. In other words, if rain falls in this yellow area, it probably drains to Kohler Creek. If it falls outside of this yellow area, it will be contributing and draining to another creek. Now, uh, there's more options than we need here. So I just what we want to extract from here is the area of the watershed here. And then it's kind of nifty that they've loaded in rainfall rates to prevent you from having to go to another database or that map that I gave you. So what we want to do here is continue. We don't want to download all this or clear it or edit it. Let's continue. Okay. 
And then what we want is, now, now again, uh, if you get into this in greater detail, you can run scenarios, and that's what this program is really for. What happens if there's a 100-year rain event and you run all these scenarios and model it? We're just using this at a basic level to get basin characteristics, and you need to tell it what you want. So you got to pull down this menu, and all we want is area and rainfall. So this is the perimeter of the basin. No, thank you. The mean basin slope, I'm telling you, they have all this data about these. It's kind of interesting. But here we go, drainage area, the area that drains to the point. Boom, that's what we want. And then we want the uh, rainfall. Uh, where did that go? Precipitation, mean annual precipitation. Great, that's all we want. Continue. And then, so here, we, here they have a basin characteristics report, continue. And you get this nice feedback here. You get a printout of the delineated basin and then the things that you asked for down here. The drainage area is 0 0.9 square miles and the mean annual precipitation is 23 inches. So I would like you to be able to use this program to get just these two parameters for different watersheds, starting with the Laurel watershed in Santa Barbara, and we'll be doing other ones. Now, notice that uh, unfortunately for us, this program likes to use square miles as a unit of area. This is pretty common. So I'm going to show you again how to convert this to acres. Uh, you can convert inches to feet pretty well. You notice that's about two feet. 20, 23 inches of rain is about two feet of rain. So uh, if you knew the acres of land and the feet of rain, you just multiply those and you'll get acre feet. So I'll show you that here in this PowerPoint slide. Uh, you need to know the equivalence. How many acres in a square mile? It turns out one square mile is 640 acres. So we start with what the program told us. There's 0.9 square miles in that area in that watershed. Here's the equivalence. One square mile is 640 acres. The unit that you don't want anymore, the square mile is in the bottom. The unit you want is on the top. And that way the square miles cancel. So you do 0.9 times 640 is 576 acres. And so that watershed that they told you was 0.9 square miles is 576 acres in size. And then I won't go through the example, it's already did the example inches to feet, but it's about two feet. Okay, I hope that helps.